At this point, I knew I fucked up. Welcome back to Bennett's Garage. Today we are going to be doing a head gasket on a 2001-2002 Toyota Tacoma with a 2.7 liter four cylinder. The customer states that we have chocolate milk and the truck, do, uh, the truck still does run, but as we can see, yeah, so we already know what it is. Now it's just a matter of tearing it all apart. For those of you who have never done a head gasket before, there's going to be some basics we're going to be taking off first. First, we're going to be taking out the battery, draining the coolant, removing the air box, taking off the intake, removing the exhaust. Once we take out the radiator, we're going to clear all the pulleys. We have to remo remove all the pulleys. We'll be taking off the valve cover and removing the front timing chain cover. And then what we do is we align the timing chain, the top dead center, top dead center. And then we can go ahead and remove the timing chain itself, take out the cam out of the head. So far, all we are doing is just removing the intake get or the intake uh, plastics it's fairly easy just one phillips head screwdriver here or screw here and four clips pops right off not a big deal i want you to get these loose it feels like there's a uh probably a pry up on that to get that off i don't think we're gonna have to remove the throttle but it's a possibility there is a 12 millimeter nut on the bottom of the intake plastic and I should just yeah, pull it right up alrighty 12 millimeter to hold on the battery bracket that goes across and then 10 millimeter to take off the positive and negative of your battery All right, we have 12 millimeter to take off your throttle cable bracket and 10 mil, 10 mil to take out all four all four coil packs when it comes to your throttle all you gotta do is pull this back and it loops in kind of like that this kind of pops right in it's quick and easy now you might want to take it loose here and try to fiddle with that but in reality it's easier just to remove these two 10 millimeters all right, looks like one and two, two 12 millimeters to hold this plate on. Going underneath the truck, we have three 12 millimeters on the front just to remove the skid plates so we can get to the radiator. So we have three up here, four and five. Take off the front one, the back one you don't have to dig it to because you can drain the oil from there. With that removed, grab a catch pan. You're gonna loosen this puppy up and see what comes out. Well, it's pink. That's a good sign. I don't see oil yet, but oil would be on top because oil floats on the water. So yeah, I'm just gonna let this drain and do the oil next. Once you do your coolant, you're gonna do a 13 millimeter. I already broke this one loose. And uh, well, at least I thought I broke it loose. That'd be a 13 mil. 13 or 14? Grab your 14 mil and take off the oil pan bolt. All that's going to do is really let you see how bad the oil is and if it's glittery is in if there's engine damage going ooh Look at that chocolate milk. 
That is really thick. So let's hope it's not really shiny also. And now that we're getting close to empty, you can see we have about eight quarts in there, maybe even nine. So there's a lot of coolant that came over into the oil and really filled up that, that oil pan. What I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna take off the oil filter yet until I'm ready to actually put on the new filter and the new oil. So right now, I'm just gonna let it drip all the way down. I'll put the plug back in, do the head gasket, come back down here, let it drip a little bit more, then pull the oil filter, put the new filter on, and then fill it up. That just kind of gets any this contamination completely out of the engine. And once you do finish the oil chain, or once you do finish the head gasket, what you're gonna do is only do 500 miles at most before you do an oil change again, flushing it out one last time. And to get these off your head, all you're gonna do is pull back that little clip right here and pull straight up. And, and what that does, it just releases it quick and easy. And then we have a ground here, it looks like another 12 over here. So we can take off that ground. And from here, we gotta take off the hose here. And we might be able to pull off the valve cover. All right, I removed the bottom half of the air intake, three 12 millimeters, you know, one, two, three, and the reason why I did that is I'm going to get an extension in here and take off this 12 mil, that 12 mil, and pull the whole cap off and just disconnect it up here and keeping the, that as one whole unit. When I pulled my hose off, you can see what I found. So I'm probably going to pull it off of the intake, completely clean it out really good, possibly even clean out the intake. And when I get the head gas or the, when I get the valve cover off, really blow this out that should be the EGR with the heat shield it's two 12s up top and you have 11s on the side one and the one back here the one back here is completely rusted out so it won't let it come all the way off but I think I have enough room on it where I can slide it back and forth and put my 14 millimeter on it to remove the exhaust I think I can do that because I can't get a grinder down there you can take that off. Have to get all your 14 millimeters to get your exhaust off up here. Don't forget your little EGR bypass down there in the corner. And they are two 12 millimeters to take them off. Once you get your exhaust unbolted, you can start working on your valve cover. And it's just 10 millimeters all the way around. Alright, once you get your bolts out. Take it and just kind of pry it a little bit. Oof. That is definitely one head gasket. Well, it has seen better days. So now I'm going to align, I'm going to take all the front stuff off and start aligning top dead center and start pulling the, uh, the camshafts out. All right, the EGR crossover pipe, you can see it down here. It goes into your EGR up here, and it goes to the other side of the engine, back here. It's held on by four 12 millimeter bolts, two on this side, two on that side. However, there is a bracket holding it behind all of this, back here, that I can't quite get to because all of this wiring is in my way. And it's all the way at the bottom. I'm assuming it's a 12 millimeter because the four were 12 millimeters. So I think I'm gonna have to completely remove all this wiring just to get to it. Not gonna be fun. 
On the other hand, I can start taking out the, the fan unit, starting with 10 millimeters up here. I see some 10 millimeters along these both sides. Take that out for clearance. I might even take out the radiator itself. I'm not positive yet. Just to give me the clearance I need to take all the front drive accessories off. Alrighty, with the fan shroud out, gives me plenty of room. I, I took the fan off the same time I took the shroud out to take off uh, your pulleys. You're going to have to take off your power steering pump because it is attached to the head. And you're going to pull your bottom pulley off. And then start working on your timing chain cover. And once all of that is off, then I'll probably start working back on the intake again because I gave up on that because of that back bolt. Alright, so I disconnected the pump just by the four bolts instead of taking it out to the side. I tried that, but the bolts will not come out through the holes. So I disconnected it, the four bolts there. Doesn't matter, it still works. Took out the oil dipstick, disconnected the the last of the three uh, last of the three belts. Now I got to take off the water pump, the bottom pulley and it looks like I might be able to oh, looks like this one right here gonna be for your alternator that's gonna have to come off all right the water pump was all 10 millimeters all the way around you had two 12 millimeters uh, here and here you have a 14 millimeter that held on the bracket for the alternator and the rest of it is going to be either 12, 10, or 14. That's pretty much everything on this vehicle. Is it 12, 10, or 14? If you still have your pulley on, you're going to see your notch. It's really hard to see. Let me see if I can zoom in. You're going to see that notch. And no, it's not going to. Oh, there we go. The notch is going to be really close to the top dead center, which is zero. So now I'm just going to go ahead and take out the bolt, take off the pulley. And go ahead and remove the timing cover. Those who don't know how to take off a pulley when everything spins. I have a bar in it. So when I pull back on it, it's going to release onto the bar. And uh, break just like that. It's that quick and easy. And just physically take the bolt out. And there we go. So now everything's still lined up. Go ahead and take everything off. This whole thing, this big thick, is your timing chain cover. So you're going to have to take off your bottom radiator hose in order to get the cover off too. All right, when I took out the thermostat, I noticed this white bead going around. This, I believe, I'm not positive, is going to be your um, head gasket sealant. Some people use it like an aftermarket sealant to try to seal the head gasket. If it's not, then that is just a whole bunch of corrosion that is building up which is not good but i'm thinking it's some kind of a head gasket sealer that someone tried to use at one point you are going to need to take off your ac compressor which is four 14 millimeters so one up top two down below three and on the back side four and you are going to have to take off your alternator uh you have the front one already taken out. I'm pretty sure there might be a back one. If not, I might be able to just slide this one out already because I already taken out two. When you get your bolts out, you're going to have four 12 millimeters in the bottom going up from your oil pan. Well, I found two more bolts hiding in the back here, one and two, and you have two in the head straight down. There you go. They have to come out. I'm hoping that's all the ones that are hiding. At this point, I realized that I messed up. The oil pickup tube is attached to the oil pan. 
and the only way to get the oil pan down is to either pull the engine up quite a bit or completely take the engine out. Neither of them are fun to do. One, you have to disconnect both sides of the motor mounts, the transmission mount, and then pull up. The other option is disconnect everything and just completely remove. The take the engine out is probably, probably the proper thing to do, but I'm still focused on trying to get it done with the engine in the car and fighting it that way. All right, here we are another week down and I was able to get the timing chain cover off by dropping the oil pan. To drop the oil pan, you have to disconnect the motor mounts and the transmission mount, pick it up about six inches, take off the dust cover off the transmission that goes to the engine transmission. Then you get the back two oil pan bolts out. Then you drop the transmission enough where you can get to the pickup tube and boom, it's off. Now that it's off, I got the head off and we can see exactly where this head gasket failed. So no big deal. I already took it up there. They pressure tested it. They a vacuum tested it and no cracks. We are good to go. They shave 0 0.005 off. So I got to clean this up. Uh, take the old gasket off, clean it up and get it ready for the new gasket. I got the head back in the machine shop. You can see they had to take off 0 0.005, which is still a pretty small amount. So it wasn't that out of whack. It wasn't that warped at all and start putting it back together which I'm going to coming into a conundrum because what if I never took the engine out I left the engine in so the videos I've seen they always say you know put the head on first and then put the valve cover gas or the valve cover on second because you have your oil pan taken off well all I did was drop the oil pan a couple inches enough to get access to the to the uh, pickup tube so I'm gonna have to put the timing chain cover back on first before I put the head on in order for everything to be right so it's gonna be a little tricky to say the least all right here's the timing chain guide the silver one is the new one the black one's the old one as you can see the top one lines up uh, pretty good. When you come down to the bottom, um, Houston, yeah, we have a problem. So as you can see, I actually am lining this one up perfectly. It dots go in between, new head gaskets on, even though I'm gonna have to take it off to put the timing cover back on first. I zip tied it loosely down here because I'm going to have to get snips up to the bottom to snip it once the pan is on or once the uh, front cover is on. I'm hoping I have enough room to get that, but right now it's nice and tight around it or it's not going to drop down. So basically all I got to do is put the head on, pull it up, put it on, and we are golden. Here's hoping anyways. Uh... If that doesn't work, then it looks like I'm going to have to bite the bullet and actually rip out the motor just to remove the pan all the way. Not something I want to do, but if it comes down to it, I'm going to have to. Again, this truck <clears throat> strikes me down. Uh, I let the customer buy the timing chain gears and everything, all the gasket sets. It saves the customer money. I don't have to worry about it. So it's usually a good deal for everyone. The downside is not every time they order something, it comes in correctly. So the timing chain was three teeth too short. The left, let's see if you can see that. Uh, the left one is about six inches too short the right one has this bottom foot that sticks out two inches too long 
So I only found this out after I put the timing chain cover on. I had the oil paint on. I had the oil pump on. I was going to go put the cams in, and I realized, hey, I'm too short. So what do you have to do? You have to take the timing cover back off. You have to take the oil pan back off. You have to take the pickup tube back off just to replace the, uh, yeah, the chain again. So we are now to the point where we're putting the, the factory chain because no one around us has a good Chloe's chain. Uh, the guy is just going to sell the vehicle after I get it back together. This is not how I like to do things, but if it works, it's working. I still have to get it back on its motor mounts, but I still got to pull it up in order to get the pan back on a second time. And then once that's on, I can put the oil pump in, water pump in, and start attaching all the accessory drives, and then wiring. But this has been an absolute nightmare of a job. I don't think I'll ever do one of these again. Now most of the stuff that you have to put back on is just the absolute reverse way that you took it off. We put a new water pump on, new oil pump on, same old AC. Uh, oil pan took me about three hours. I had to come on about, about six times to get the oil pan gasket on correctly. So I'm not going to show the whole process of how to put it back in. Like I said, it's just the complete opposite of how you've taken it out. Intake, exhaust, valve cover, wire it back up, and you're good to go. The truck is finally back together. In total, I have... After it's all said and done, I have about 85 to 90 hours on this thing. Um, I did some things wrong. I had to backtrack. Can't charge a customer for that. But at the same time, the customer also bought some things that didn't fit. So it was kind of both of our faults. Um, I had to end up taking the header back off or the manifold back off because the bolts on the bottom that goes to exhaust stripped out. So after I put it all back on, I had to take it all back off. That cost me three hours in doing it and cutting out the old bolts, welding in new bolts. The fan went, look, went together a lot better than I thought. Belts are nice and tight. I'm in a process now putting fluids in. Uh, I'm going to be coolant. It's going to be oil, power steering. I top off the transmission. And once all that's done, I got to put in your air box and the battery and this thing would be firing up for the first time since the change all right here's the culmination we are fully back together battery is in and we are ready to start fluids have been changed i did drain that little tiny bit of oil that was left in the oil pan back out swapped out the oil filter all new fluids Topped off the tranny, topped off the uh, power steering, and now, if all goes right, we should have fire and not hear a whole bunch of timing chain rattle. So, power, fuel pump firing up, and here we go. Battery seems a little dead. Well, we won't have to charge the battery. Well, I'm glad I didn't try to start. We can see we have a fuel injector leaking pretty significantly. I don't know if it's just this one leaking or if it's all of them. If it's just this one, I probably just have to pull this, this side up, maybe the other side. Lift it up and then reseat it. It's probably just an o-ring that's bad. But that's definitely going to have to be addressed before we start. I pulled the injector. You can see right there where my issue is. So I'm just going to put a new rubber gasket on it, o-ring. Put it back in. Now we have injector solved, battery charging. Let's see if we can have a different outcome. Let's try it. 
trying. Because it's trying to start, I'm not going to jump to the timing conclusion yet. I might have a bad cam position sensor, a crank position sensor. I might replace both of them or one of them first and see if it will start. Uh, the crank position sensor, you have to completely take out the alternator just to get to it. It's a real pain in the butt. I'm hoping it's not that one. I have to remove the intake to get to the cam position sensor. I'm just going to try that one first. Uh, and see what happens. It's the easier of the two, but I'm not going to jump to the conclusion that it's timing chain yet. And here is the crank position sensor. And the only thing that I see that might be wrong with it is a cracked housing. So unless there's a wire that comes across from here and tries to be ground through here that I broke, I don't think this was going to be the problem, but I bought a new one anyways. So let me put the new one in and tighten it down and put it all back together and see if it will start that way. If not, I'm going to the crank position sensor, which the alternator has to come <laughs> the alternator has to come off because it's underneath the alternator. Yay. Alright, I got the camshaft position 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 uh the camshaft sensor in, airbox back on, everything tightened back down. We are good to go for another try. So, fingers crossed that this thing was going to fire right up. Now that we have a position sensor in. And I can take back the crank sensor. Come on. There we go. And a one, and a two, and a... Well... It's running. That's how you... Yeah. I see a check engine light. I gotta run that code. Well, we have a maiden voyage fail. I made it about a half mile. I had to walk back to the shop and get the truck and trailer. But everything shut down. Just no no warning. Just died. I'm assuming battery. Because when I tried to restart it. It cranked a half a crank. And went da 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 sound. Like a normal dead battery will do. Which leads me to believe that the alternator is not working correctly. It is hooked up. I just don't think it's working. And I'm not going to be able to test it until I can get power to it. And then I can test it after that. So, back on the battery charger. And yeah. Get a good charge. Start it back up. Test the, uh, test the alternator to see if it's good. So, today when I came out to work on it. First thing I try to do is start it. Of course, battery's dead. So, I'm going to have to tell customer that the battery is something to be concerned about for future use. I go to start it, and it kind of starts up fine. Like, the IAC is working. Okay. Kind of like the IAC is working. And then it's going to go into a real hard shake. Bog down and die. Okay. It's bogging down. Start seeing the engine shaking now. There we go. So that is today's symptoms. I, again, no OBD2 codes at all. I know it's not the mass airflow. I don't think it's idler control. It might be. Could be throttle body, but every time I try to touch gas, it automatically wants to bog down. I'm gonna be pulling the timing chain cover back off 
pulling out the spark plug so I can turn it all over by hand. And just to double check that I have both cams lined up, per lined up correctly and that the timing mark is lined up correctly. Not something that's fun as many hours as I have in on this, but it's my own fault. I, I know I double checked. I know I did. But I got to take it apart just to find out again. Alright, here I am again. Tore it apart. We are perfectly within spec here. Backside. You can see two dots, one dot. Perfect. Down there, key weight needs to be up. Key weight is up. And then the last thing. Alright, key weight is fully up. So, completely opposite of that, I can see, see it right there. See the orange mark? That's perfect. So there's no doubt in my mind that this is not lined up. So it is not a timing related issue. Well, we put everything back together one last time. We didn't find anything out of the normal. So we don't know why it was spitting and sputtering. <clears throat> and cutting out. Uh, I, I, I'm clueless. Lance was scratching his head. He really thought that I had timing off. That's why we tore it apart again. Well, we had an oil leak in the uh, oil pan. But he really thought we had uh, it out of time. But I proved to him that it was in time. We put it all back together. So I have yet to start it up. I don't know if it's going to spit and sputter again. So let's find out. Well, it's holding. Sounds a lot better. I think at this point, about 110 hours I have been on this. For something that should only have taken about 35 to 40. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna wrap this up, call this a video, and post it online. Thank you for watching. One last thing before we give it back to the customer. And that's going to be an oil change to flush any of the leftover contamination out of the engine bay. I don't know if you can see it, but this is the flush. And yeah, it, it's kind of milky still. That's just how much gunk was in the engine. So this is why you do it.